Now I want to finish off that example uh, after our break with looking at the level sets and the contour plot of this function. This is really great to have this 3D picture, but it's pretty complicated and it's hard to do by hand. And sometimes it actually kind of obscures things that are best seen by looking at the contour plot. So the, the, the great thing about the contour plot is it only uses two dimensions. It's going to take all of these contours, like you saw in the applet, and just smush them all down to the XY plane. And as long as we just remember, give them all a label, and remember where they were, then that really ha allows us to reconstruct the function if we wanted to. So we could just put it in this picture. But the whole point is to not have, have to use all three dimensions. So let's just rewrite real quick. Um, if this is equal, uh, oh, sorry, let's see. That's the function. Sorry, I wrote equals 1 too prematurely. So if I set z equals 0, I got just the origin. So I'm going to write up big pair of axes. And so this is where z equals 0. I'm going to put that in red. Let's see, I, I don't know. Does the colors show up okay? The colors don't really show up very well because this is I need more light for that probably. Or maybe like just the camera doesn't register it very well. And then we saw that 4x squared plus y squared is an ellipse and the intercepts were 1 half and 1. So let's say that's 1, that's a half, and that's 1. And so it looks like this. And that we we decorate with the number one to indicate that's the stuff with height one. And then the next one was one over root two and root two, some somewhere about here. That's just terrible. I'm just getting worse and worse at drawing ellipses as I get older. But oh well. And then uh, three. So that oh, sorry, let's uh, let's write that down. That was two equals four x squared plus y squared. Three equals four x squared plus y squared. So that's one equals four thirds x squared plus one third y squared. What's our key numbers now? It's uh, root three over two squared and root three squared. So root 3 over 2 is in here. And what we notice is that these guys are getting closer together. And that indicates steepness. When contours get closer together, it means the, the smaller change in x or y gives you the same change in z. Because remember that if going from each contour to the next contour is exactly the same increment in z. That's really important for a contour plot to be not misleading, is that these guys have to be regularly spaced. In principle, they don't have to be, but then you lose that connection between, just visually, between how close they are together and how steep the, the curve is. Now, let's just do one more, because it's pretty. If that's a 4, then that just is 1 squared, and that's 2 squared. And so I get one that actually hits at nice places. Whoops, whoops, I got too many colors here. Okay, so that's even closer. Oh, they're not supposed to cross. This is bad sketch. One thing that's really important about contour lines is that they never, ever cross. We'll see what will look like an exception to that later on, but it won't really be an exception to that. Um, two different contours from different values can't cross. That would mean it wasn't a function. That would mean this, same, this one point got assigned the value 3 and the value 4. So I, I should have done that on purpose. I could pretend I did it on purpose, but I really didn't. So this is nice because it's only using two dimensions, and yet it really con conveys the information of the contour plot, of, of the whole plot in, in this contour sketch. So, um, And we know that if you want to look at how steep it is, which is going to be very interesting when we look at derivatives very soon, the, it's steeper where the contours are closer together. It's less steep where the contours are farther apart. This, this idea is going to be crucial if we look at a function of three variables, which the book talks about, um, because we can't g draw the graph of all three inputs and the one output of a function of three variables. It would need four dimensions. But we can draw in three dimensions the analog of the contour plot that we've got here. OK, so that's one quick example, and we'll look at more in class.